All right, so <clears throat> we're going to look at one more example with a recursively uh, defined sequence. Um, another way that these can be referred to is as a recurrence relation. I don't think I used that term in the last video. Uh, but any recursively defined sequence you refer to as a recurrence relation. And we've got here, I suppose this is a little bit more complicated uh, recurrence relation than we had in the last um, couple of examples. It's defined in terms of the previous two values, right? Not just the previous one value. And what we're given in part A, I've got two parts to this example, a part A and a part B. <clears throat> what we're given in part A is a solution. A solution to the recurrence relation. And um, actually what we did in the last two examples was we found some solutions. When we found, when we found the explicit formula in the last example, that is a solution to the recurrence relation. We also did that in the first example. So finding a solution and finding an explicit formula in terms of n uh, really is the same thing for a recurrence relation. And what we're going to do, what we're going to do in this example is we're going to verify that this guy is a solution. So the solution's already given, we're just going to verify it. So how do we do that? Well, it's kind of like in algebra. You first start solving for x. Of course, that's a nice, easy equation. You divide by 3. You get your solution. And one thing you learn to do uh, is you verify that solution by plugging it back in. You say, well, you get the same thing on both sides of the equation. OK, so that's exactly what we're going to do with the recurrence relation. <clears throat> I'm going to plug 1 in for a sub n. Right now I've got to figure out what a subscript n minus 1 and n minus 2 are, but in this form, in this form, the sequence is just constant. It's 1, right? There's no n on this side of the, the equals. So no matter what you put in for the subscript, you're always going to get 1. So a with subscript n minus 1, I'm going to plug in there. a with subscript n minus 2, plug in there. And if I do that, I get the same thing on both sides. Negative 3 plus 4 equals 1. That's a solution. OK, now. <clears throat> okay, so for this example, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this guy because I've got it kind of marked up here. So let's rewrite it. Let's rewrite it, and so this this solution is a little bit more complex. So what we have to do is take some time at the beginning to figure out what are a subscript n minus 1? Well, we're just going to go in and replace n with n minus 1. And then also, what is a with subscript n minus 2? So very similarly, just replace n with n minus 2. All right, so I can put all of this stuff in for a sub n, all of this stuff for a sub n minus 1, and all of this stuff in for a subscript n minus 2. And if we do that, <clears throat> we're going to have something that looks like this. So on this side of the equation, we want to have 2, negative 4 to the n plus 3. Okay, then we've got negative 3 times all this stuff.
and then what plus four times all this stuff okay so if I work my way down and simplify I should end up back with 2 times minus 4 to the n plus 3. So I'm going to distribute the minus 3 here. That's negative 6. Now at the same time, at the same time, I'm going to use one of my rules of exponents. Remember if you had a number with the same base, Right, you multiplied with the same base, you could add the exponents. I'm going to kind of actually take that rule backwards, and I'm going to rewrite this guy as minus 4 to the n times minus 4 to the minus 1. Right, Same base, which is minus 4, exponents were added, so I just broke it back apart. And then I've got negative 3 times 3, which is minus 9. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to break this guy apart using the same rule of exponents. Also going to distribute the 4. Be what? Plus 8. Break this guy apart. Okay, now what can I do? Well, another rule of exponents was that if we had something to the negative 1, x to the minus 1, same as 1 over x. Right? I can apply that rule here. 4 to the minus 1 is the same as 1 over minus 4. And negative 4 to the minus 2, so if this was a 2, this would be 1 over that number squared. So this is the same as 1 over minus 4 squared. So I'm going to apply that rule and also my minus 9 and my 12 those can be added together. So if we do those things Okay, and then the minus 9 and the 12, those add up to 3. <clears throat> okay, now I can multiply these two numbers. Negative 6 times negative 1 fourth, that would be 6 fourths. Uh, this is going to be 1 over 16 times 8 or in other words that's 8 over 16 right, multiplying these two numbers together oh, and I left off my minus 4 to the n that needs to be there and then I've got my plus 3 so let's see I can reduce these fractions that's 3 halves times minus 4 to the n plus 1 half minus 4 to the n plus 3 and then these two terms are like terms right they both have the common factor minus 4 to the n and so I get to add the coefficients 1 half plus 3 halves is 4 halves minus 4 to the n plus 3 but of course 4 halves is just 2 And that was what we originally started with on the left side of the equation. So we verified that that guy is a solution to the recurrence relation. Of course, that one was quite a bit more complicated than the first one, but nonetheless is still a solution. And so we can see that there might not be just one solution which is different than what you were used to in your that's different than what you were used to in your 
or algebra, when you solved for x, there weren't going to be multiple solutions, at least not in that type of equation. Right? So we could have lots of solutions to uh, the recurrence relation. Anyway, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding of sequences and some ways that sequences can be used.